Hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. John Gibson, Flagstar. Welcome to, you know, our September edition of the Flex Series. Having a little uh, technical difficulty today, so we're hardwiring here for the earpiece, so I apologize for that. Um, but we're really excited about today's session. Uh, as always, trying to figure out ways to bring value to the partnership uh, above and beyond the normal course of business. And, and you know, again, I'd be remiss without saying, hey, hopefully this finds all of you, your loved ones, friends, family, doing well, safe, healthy, um, as we're here, you know, winding down what's really an interesting year uh, from a, a mortgage perspective, from an economy perspective. It's crazy to think in two weeks, you know, it'll be end of third quarter. We'll already be in fourth quarter and this year has flown by. Um, but you know, again, I think there's a lot of opportunity in the marketplace right now. Uh, and while I think there's a tendency to believe doom and gloom that sometimes gets fed to us uh, by media and news outlets, things like that. I think for a lot of us that have been doing this for a very long time, uh, there's always opportunity, right? And, and you're seeing a lot of really good success stories uh, and you're seeing a lot of growth with inside the space. And you're also seeing a lot of maybe what you're hearing at a national level while uh, inflation's real, obviously affordability, interest rates have risen. You're starting to see things slow down uh, from a housing perspective as far as sales and, and maybe in certain areas you've seen maybe things level off from a listing and selling above list price. So <laughs> selling above list price. Um, but again, I think you got to keep it in the back of your mind, right? It's not necessarily every marketplace across the board where you may be, may still be prospering and growing. So there's a ton of opportunity. And, and one of the things I was excited about is our guest speaker coming on today because um, where he's at and what they're doing, I think plays a significant part in a lot of LO's future in this industry moving forward. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit in this session. So um, before I bring him on stage, I wanna give him a little introduction. So our guest speaker today, Brian View, over at Finlocker. Uh, he's been in the financial industry for a very long time. Um, he started his mortgage banking career uh, back in the day with Source One Mortgage Corp, part of the integration team that was worked in that city uh, acquisition of Source One. He's on stage right now, so I'll embarrass him a little bit while he's here. <laughs> he, attend, uh, he attained his uh, certified mortgage broker, his CMB, back in 2005. He's a Sparty, so he's an alumni of good old Michigan State. Go green. Uh, go green. There you go. And, and he's been doing a tremendous amount of work over the last three years uh, with Finlocker. And then I know one of Brian's big passions, which I want to throw out there, is he's a board member of the downtown boxing gym uh, youth program there in Detroit. That is a nonprofit organization that's been teaching kids in the Detroit uh, and surrounding area some of the toughest neighborhoods to you know, in regards to valuable life lessons inside and outside the classroom and, and in the boxing ring since 2007. I know Brian does a, a lot of work uh, and has helped in a lot of situations with that gym and, and their mission. So uh, with that being said, Brian, welcome to our Flex Star Flex for September and the stage. Good to see you, man. How you doing? I'm doing well, John. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to uh, spend some time with you here and can I talk about the industry and the market and, and uh, just catch up. It's been a it's been a long time. It's been a little bit of a minute, man. So before we get into anything, if people don't know you um, and your situation, obviously uh, saw the Sun, Pittsburgh Pirates, <laughs> you were at the game, saw some reaction from you, uh, saw that he got picked up. Like, how was that whole event, man? Being a father yeah, and seeing that. Uh, it, it, it's, we, my wife and I, we talk about it. It was, a ma it was magical. The whole the whole process, right? Um, so our, our son, our oldest, is a professional baseball player. And, and prior to June of this year, when I said professional baseball player, I always had to do this because he was basically a subsidized uh, baseball player. That's right. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, he had a seven years in the, in the minor league system, uh, drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates. He's been with the organization uh, since then. And he got the call up in June. And uh, it was it was pretty cool. It was uh, for us. Um, he got the call on a Thursday uh, at warmups. There he was down in Atlanta with his AAA team, 
finished like his bullpen warmups and the manager came over and they normally do kind of a, a team kind of huddle and break. And then they go to the locker room and get ready for the game. And uh, at this point they, they said, we'll see everybody back, you know, in a few minutes, except for one guy, this guy's going up to the, to the big club. And so he, he called um, my wife uh, FaceTime her. he never FaceTimes us at all. And she's like, Oh my God. And I'm, I was on a call like this, uh, and uh, she comes walking in and I'm like, oh, I knew what it was. So I had to exit my call and we uh, we made plans the next morning, drove to Pittsburgh. It's an easy drive from the Detroit area to Pittsburgh. And that night he got in the game. And I think, John, what you're uh, referencing was the, the camera guy found our family. Uh, we didn't expect him to get in the game that day. And uh, the camera guy kind of found us and it was just, you know, it's, you know, high school, travel, high school, college, and then seven years of just grinding in the minors. It all came together and he did pretty well. He struck out Evan Longoria there. Yeah. For his first out, which is pretty cool. And I think I, I may have shown a little bit of emotion uh, during that session. So it was all good. Just a little bit. Well, hey, man, that, that's I bring that up because I know you and I have talked about it in the past, right? And kind of that whole minor league and the, and the struggle and the conversations right at some point like hey maybe this isn't just going to work and now right. you need to move on with life and and i haven't seen you since then i haven't talked to you since then it was so cool to see that so i wanted to kind of <laughs> recognize that here but i will tell you this there's another reason why i did it right because i think it's a good transition to our segment today which is you talk about it right it's that journey yeah. and and in our industry there are so many people from a home ownership perspective that that's still the american dream right grow up whatever, go to college, do your thing, not go to college, trade school, do whatever. But it is to eventually have that house and that roof over your head and have that ownership. And I think in today's market more than ever, and you tell me what you guys are saying, right? But that dream's a little bit challenged from a lot of different ways. And yeah. I think that's kind of your convers our conversation today is how can we help our business partners, the, the loan officers on the street with helping that borrower through the journey. So I thought that was a pretty good segue to get into it. I love it. Yeah, no, I think uh, there's a lot of parallels for sure. on what, you know, somebody like my son goes through in terms of years, right. Of, of building up and preparing for that, that moment. And when you think about a first time home buyer, and I talk about this a lot, just in my conversations that I have with lenders every day, you know, the average home first time home buyer doesn't wake up magically on a Saturday and say, I'm going to go buy a home. They, they go through a period of preparation. They go through what I call the emotional preparation as well as the financial preparation. And more, more than ever, they're looking for partners like your, your customers to help guide them through that journey, through that process. And as we all know, there's a lot of noise out there and, and there's a lot of digital noise uh, that's out there. And, and frankly, consumers are especially young, you know, folks are looking for kind of this hybrid experience of digital, you know, access to something when I want it on my terms, but immediate access to a professional, someone that can really mentor and help me through this process. And what we've done is kind of, uh, we'd like to say we, we take care of the technical, the technology side of this equation and partner with like-minded originators and lenders who are in the local market as that kind of trusted professional. So it's interesting to me, right, Brian? Because I, I do think that's key. Like if I, as, we're, as we're talking to loan officers, right? Going from a $4 trillion market to, again, pick and choose what you believe, right? A two and a half, a two trillion market, somewhere it settles in there. And, yep. and as you look forward, right? Probably still in that two to one eight range as, as we're moving forward. And I think there's a lot of loan officers that are seeing obviously pipelines shrink, refis have pretty much all gone away. The heat standalone HELOC that has now become the in vogue product to tap into equity that people are rolling out. And, and talk to me about kind of, you know, what you guys have seen, the lenders you're working with, the, the and some, you know, maybe some of that journey, right? Because I do think that's what's going to be important moving forward. People that you've talked to in the past or that you may talk to now or in the future, that don't qualify, how do you stay in touch with them? How do you help educate them? What are the resources like a FinLocker to help them get from a, we're here today, but we're ready to buy in six months or a year from now and staying in touch with them? Because I think that's going to be the key to a lot of people's success. Yeah, no, I, I think um, 
I think you're spot on. I think before I do that, I, there is another key, especially for the, this audience, right? Uh, and, and they've already figured it out because they're, they're here watching the Flagstar Flex series. It's having partners like Flagstar, you know, who've been at this, this business serving uh, third party originators, mortgage brokers, other, other financial institutions, independent mortgage bankers since the late eighties. I mean, there's, I don't think there's anybody else in this industry that's been doing it as consistent and as long as Flagstar and, and is doing it as well. And you can't, you cannot underestimate the value of that, having that partner as a lender. There's no question about it. And so I, again, I'd be remiss if I didn't, you know, state the obvious here, but uh, kudos to the the team at Flagstar, John, your team for continuing to be that kind of uh, consistent, reliable, trusting partner for independent uh, lenders of all sizes. Well, hey, I appreciate that. And look, Brian, you had a part in it too, right? Like this is a family and, and you were in the role that I'm in prior to you going out and doing what you are doing at Finlock and you played a part in recruiting me to get me here, right? So it's a family and it's a it's a long time in building. But to your point, and we've talked about it before, right? The, the strength and stability of a flag star as a partner in these type of uncertain times, being a bank and, and the stability that we have from a financial perspective and what that brings certainly allows us to be, I think, you know, a good partner. Obviously, we always work to strive and be better um, yeah. and, and try to, you know, get better at what we do each and every day. So uh, certainly appreciate that. But yeah, let's let's talk to some of our, our partners right now, right? What are you seeing? What are some of the tools that they have at their disposal? I think that staying with the customer for life type of situation, right? And what value they can bring with working with like a Finlocker. Let's talk through that a little bit so everybody understands. Yeah, maybe maybe it's helpful if I just flip through a couple of these slides. Um, like I said earlier, I don't want to I don't want to be an infomercial, so we'll yeah. try to we'll try to stay generic. But um, one of the things that that we do at, at Finlocker, we are a B two B two C business model. So we're not, we don't have a direct to consumer presence. Our, our product is delivered, published, if you will, on behalf of our client. And so for the consumer, what we're providing the consumer on behalf of our lender client is this concept of financial well being. We happen to build experiences that lead to kind of mortgage readiness as an objective. And then for our, our partner, for the lender, it's all about um, engagement and ultimately converting, helping convert engagement into revenue, right? So we call it lead to loan. There's probably a bunch of different terminologies for that. And to set aside kind of Finlocker for a moment, it doesn't really matter what kind of tools you, you have as a lender. I think focusing on your customer and on, on, on that consumer and being their, their trusted partner, their, their financial friend, if you will, uh, I stole that from my my friends at Sales Boomerang. They they talk about this concept of a financial friend. I love it. It's and you have to do that. And we we talked about this already with with a combination of uh, technology because that's an expectation that that consumers have, but with the knowledge and the and the and the trust that that only a a loan professional can bring. And so I think uh, that's that's what we're seeing a lot of focus on is how do we engage our customers, our prospects, the consumers we work with in a digital first manner while not losing that personal touch, that personal relationship. Um, this, this slide though, forget Finlocker on the right for a moment. And as a loan originator, again, of all sizes, if you don't think <laughs> that your customers are, are going to these logos on the left, you're missing out. And, and when when they're going to the mints, the, the sesames, the nerd wallets, the karmas, the lending trees, and used to be called Truebill, the, the, the one at the top there, um, when they're going to these apps for for tools, right, for for help, what's behind each one of these apps are is a marketplace. And the, and that customer is the is the product at that point. And so what what we've done is engineered an experience for consumers on behalf of our client, the lender, that gives that consumer much of what they may go to one, two, three, or even four of those apps and logos on the left. We, we They can come to one place and it's 
it's not Finlocker. It's whatever our whoever our client is, whatever they branded that instance. Yep. And and again, it's all about a meaningful engagement with that consumer, providing value. And in in the case of what we've engineered is, you know, there's three, four, five, maybe six value pieces, digital tools that the consumers have access to in this experience. And it's a one-to-one -one relationship. When the consumer's in this app, it's just the consumer and that sponsoring lender, whoever owns the app, so to speak. And so it's not a marketplace. Um, the consumer's not being inundated with, with offers, if you will. It's really a controlled experience. So again, there's other tools out there that, that can do some of this stuff on a kind of third party or, or B2B to C private label experience. Um, but, but what needs to be pointed out is the consumer is, they're going to these apps. They're looking for these digital tools. I mean, there's millions of consumers in these apps. So why not, why not control that experience and have your own kind of experience for your customers? Well, and I, I think that's one of the main values that I wanted to bring across, right? And, and, and we're going to talk about a couple more too, but I think that's one of the main value points or value propositions you as the loan officer at, and I'm just going to use myself, right? If I was John Gibson at Gibson Mortgage, I think there has to be that realization, right? To your point, like forget about the the what I see is the right side, but look at like the mints all the way down to the lending trees. That's happening. The, yeah. Those platforms exist for a reason. It's not because one or two people are looking at them and using them. It's because millions of people are doing it. And the minute that happens, like I've said before numerous times, and you mentioned it, right, Brian? I'm John Gibson at Gibson Mortgage. The minute my client goes out to one of these institutions, there's a wedge between me and the client. Right. And, and, and with something like your tool, right? And what you guys do at Finlocker, it allows you to control that relationship and foster it and continue to mentor it so that when it is time and they are mortgage ready, they're thinking of me, John Gibson, not, oh, I talked to him a year ago and yeah, I did all this other stuff. So now I'm going to get bombarded by them behind the place from the marketplace. So I, I love the fact that as a, loan officer, you're able to control the narrative and control the relationship. Yeah, and it's it's um, <laughs> when I first kind of made the move over here and started to talk with lenders, I would ask questions like what what happens when uh, when a consumer, a customer comes into your into your virtual shop or into your branch, however, they're coming to you and they're not ready today. What what happens there? I actually had a couple of loan officers say, well, depending on why they're not ready, you know, if it's credit related, I might tell them to go get, go get a credit karma and come back when they've improved their score. I'm like, Whoa, Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> as soon as you've sent them there, they're not coming back. It's just That's the right. fact of the matter. Uh, you know, and there's the, the way I kind of think about these types of tools, they, they're not meant to replace any other tools in your toolkit. We're not a CRM. We're not a point of sale. We we believe you can you can supplement the the consumer experience from your CRM with a tool with a digital set of tools like you're seeing here on the screen, um, because just the you know the drip campaign you know birthday anniversary that stuff's nice but it's not you know I don't know how many recipes you can send out on a in a given year and 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 hope they're going to turn into to to transactions and loans I think engaging consumers with tools they're going to use every day that's that's going to be on their phone it's going to be linked on their phone that's right that, that's pretty powerful uh, yep as i just dropped my phone <laughs> <laughs> um so i i, I talked a little bit about the 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 you know we publish an app this is just a screenshot of some of the apps that are out in the app store it you know we have a finlocker kind of version of it that's a friends and family but every other app every other version of our our stuff is is one of our clients. Um, but this just gives you a view of kind of what's in it for the consumer in, in our app. And the other, the other thing that I would be thinking about as a, an originator, and maybe even as a marketer that supports originators is how do I build the funnel? How do I actually get eyeballs months, maybe years before someone's ready to buy a home? How do I attract them into my 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 funnel and into my ecosystem, and so that's another uh, I think value to having a product 
you know, like a Finlocker that you can uh, put out into the marketplace. Because in our particular product, consumers have access to their credit score, their credit report. So all of the accounts that feed their credit report. Credit score updates every 30 days. By the way, that's an engagement opportunity. Every time that credit score changes, the app's going to ping the consumer to come back in and check out their score. Remember, they're not coming back to Finlocker. They're coming back to Flagstar or, or ABC Mortgage, whoever that lender is. Uh, we, we have some cool credit uh, engagement tools as well, a credit simulator and what we call a credit compass. Credit simulator allows the user to, to go into the credit widget and, and put in scenarios. What if I paid down or paid off my credit card or opened a new account? What would that do to my score? And they can run those simulators as often as they like. Or they can go in and say, I'm currently a 620 credit score. And it, I want to get to a 700, what should I do? And they plug in 700, hit simulate, and the app will come back with a series of suggested actions they can take that others in their similar situation would have done. So we find credit is actually uh, one of the most engaging aspects of the app. And set aside Finlocker, as a loan officer, if, you, if you're not going to work with someone like Finlocker, go find a place where you can provide your customers with access to their credit score. Yep. Because they want it. And they they look at it and they engage with it. It's 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 it. We see it all the time. So that's that's something you can do, again, with or without without Finlocker. Uh, we just we took it a step further and we went beyond credit and and allow the user to link to their financial accounts. So what does that mean? It's it's not just their bank accounts that we realize like the traditional sense of asset verification is linking your bank account and sharing that across. That's a byproduct of what we do, but we actually allow the user to link all of their accounts, checking savings, 401k, IRA, life insurance policies on the asset side of that personal ledger. And then personal loans, charge cards, credit cards, auto loans, student loans, mortgage loans, if they have those, and more on the liability side. We, they can even link their utility payments or utility accounts and track all of that in the experience. And then once a user has linked those accounts, they have this single place to see their entire financial life. And then they there's another set of engagement tools that are available. So budgeting, goal setting. So saving for things like a new car, college, or a new home. Those can all be done in the, in the locker or creating budgets to improve spending, lower debt to income ratio, as an example. Again, all engagement uh, tools. Uh, we have a library of education content that's kind of always available. Uh, we've built this readiness tool, this perpetual readiness assessment. Today, it focuses on mortgage readiness. Um, and so if you think of a first-time home buyer who's 6, 12, 18 months away from being ready and they've downloaded ABC Mortgage, you know, their, their financial fitness app, and they're, they're using it now as a tool to get mortgage ready. So they're monitoring their credit and they're, they're simulating changes to their credit. They've linked their accounts. They've created budgets. They're using the embedded HUD approved detailed budget. They've they've created goals to save for a down payment, closing costs, maybe even a reserve account after they've owned the home. Uh, they're leveraging the the uh, financial literacy and and home ownership education content in the locker, and they're on this journey towards getting themselves ready. And the ready that the locker is analyzing all of their direct source data against you know, the, the GSE guidelines. And when they reach that point of readiness in the app, we actually enable that user to share the data directly with the loan officer securely from the app. And so now when you think of this period of curation or grooming, whatever you want to call it, culminates with readiness, the, the, the consumer can now share their data directly to the loan officer through the app. We put it, we smush it together in a Fanny 3.4 MISMO compliant data set. And the lender then can ingest it and pre-fill their, their mortgage application. And a byproduct of what's delivered through that payload of data is the digital asset verification. Uh, what's kind of coming soon, and this is one of the first places we're talking about it, is the uh, same way a consumer links to their bank accounts, as an example, they'll be able to link directly to their payroll account. And so you'll have this kind of in a locker, a consumer will be verified across five dimensions, identity credit, income, assets, and employment. Always on, always connected, and always ready to uh, to push over to the loan officer to start a mortgage application. And then 
we've also embedded native um, uh, real estate search. So now the, now the consumer has another reason to use this app is for searching for, for real estate, which means hopefully they're not going to Zillow or one of those other sites. And so again, it's just a, a set of tools that are available uh, to the consumer that help on that journey. Uh, I kind of said a, a lot there. Let me take a pause. Well, no, and I, I think like for those that are, you know, watching it, right? The I think it's, the, it's a great slide, number one, because I think, again, I'll go back to like, I'm John Gibson, I own Gibson Mortgage. Uh, I'm a broker or a lender, right? I'm looking at the educate, empower, and enable, right? And, and with inside that, think about everything Brian just kind of went through. And that's all part of that journey, right? And, and again, I go back to what I said in the beginning. I do think it's going to be more important than ever to cultivate relationships from your contacts, right? And you mentioned something about, oh, yeah, somebody doesn't qualify because their credit score is too low. I refer them to credit card and tell them to come back. Well, you might have been able to be okay with that two, three, four, last two, three, four years because yeah. there was so much volume in the marketplace. You're not going to be okay with that moving forward because you're just taking that contact that could turn into a longstanding customer and you're passing them on to somebody else and you're never going to see them again, right? Yeah. And, and I think the, the thing about this too is I also liken it to putting somebody through this, I like the word readiness that you used, right? Like all facets of, in this case, a mortgage and budgeting and managing their finances. But all along the way, think about the what Brian talked about, the contact points, right? The monitoring that takes place. You as the lender having the ability to kind of, okay, their credit score updated, you're going to know it, they're going to know it. That's a great touch point for them to stay with them along the journey. And guess what that leads to? Not only on that transaction, but how many people do you think that they talk to and refer, whether it's family members or friends that say, hey, you know what? I wasn't ready to buy, but I'm working with John Gibson. He's got me on this plan and here's the tool and here's what I'm doing. It just continues to build referrals for you. I'm sure you've seen that, Brian, from some of your clients. Absolutely. And, and you know, I touched a little bit about, you know, the aspects of, of this slide and the, and the, you know, the, the tools in the locker as opportunities to market and, and talk to the market differently than most originators talk to the market today. Right. We, we still, I think we still have um, a transaction based mindset when it comes to marketing, we're, we're marketing to the customer who's ready now. Um, and a tool like, Finlocker, or just take one or more of these various tools. And if you had other uh, places or, or tools that you could bring to, to consumers, you can now build a specific marketing strategy all, just around credit <clears throat> and build your funnel with, with folks that want to learn about, you know, understand their credit, be educated around their credit and improve their credit. And now this is the longer tail. This is an investment. That's right. <laughs> um, but, you you know, imagine building trust with consumers, uh, 12 months, 24 months, 36 months before they're even considering buying a home and, and, and getting financing for that home. And, and the chances, I would think that the chances of me being able to, to convert somebody in that, uh, that I've been engaged with through, through my technology, through my partnerships for two, three years, I'm going to have a better chance to convert them than, you know, the online app they saw at a Super Bowl ad, right? Uh, so I, I, those are the things I think about is how do you, how do you, widen your funnel, focus on talking to people much earlier than you normally would focus on and get them engaged with your brand, with your logo and start building trust. And there's, there's a lot of great loan officers out there. They're, not that I'm a, a big TikTok guy, but there's a lot of people that are using the, the Instagrams and the TikToks uh, to build awareness and build education and build a following. Um, we're just, we're kind of taking it to another level where you're, we're actually giving you a set of tools, digital tools that you, you can connect to those activities. Well, I think it's a mindset shift, a mindset shift too, because to your point, from marketing to a lot of different avenues, this is still looked at as a very transactional here and now, I need to refi, I want to pull cash out, I'm buying a house. But to your point, and I think this is key moving forward, hence the reason why I was excited that you could do this and kind of give some of your thoughts around this because you're living it and you're seeing it every single day, is cultivating a different book of business that sustained you for the next 12, 18, 24 months. Why? 
look, you're still going to get the repeat business if you're doing the right thing, right? Your customers you did right by, they're going to come back to you. They're going to refer people to you. But how do you increase, to your point, how do you widen the funnel, right? Yeah. So that you're cultivating and you're getting that relationship built at the beginning, beginning stage before it's ever really time to buy a house. To me, I think that's important to that mind shift that has to change with a lot of LOs in this industry. No doubt. And and one last slide, because you just yeah you hit on it a little bit with the loan officers. This just gives you a view of this is one, you know, this is our little business, but you can see what's happening just in the, you know, the last 12 plus month as the market has shifted. This represents the growth that we've seen in individual loan officers who are adopting, you know, their own version of FinLocker. And so it's it's starting it it's starting to take hold and it's the market's had a lot a lot to do with that no doubt about it but what's encouraging is um, there are, are a significant number of originators that are looking for different ways to engage and uh, and bring value to their consumers and that's what that's what we're all about at Finlocker and we we're excited to uh, you know we work closely with uh, the Flagstar team today and uh, super excited to be able to come on here and just tell a little bit about our story. Yeah, Brian, what are you seeing? I know um, this is a great slide too, because you're seeing the transition, right? You're seeing the the education of a loan officer going, hey, I, there, I got to add more value for my book of business, right? So how do I get there? Is there, um, have you seen anything like trends or statistics wise where you're seeing like, you know, these guys started using something like a fin locker and they've seen a conversion ratio on like a t on a certain like uh, characteristic or parameter. Have you seen anything like that that you can talk about? Yeah. So for, for us, we're, it's a little early uh, to kind of measure conversion. We we across our um, client base, if you will, we see kind of an organic conversion and, and we we measure conversion a little bit differently because I don't necessarily know when a loan closes per se, but I know when I know when a user, a consumer, has shared their information from the locker and a loan officer accepted it. We're, we make a pretty big assumption that that's for a mortgage application. And we, right now, we see organically, you know, two two and a half percent of the lockers are are doing that on kind of a an annualized basis. Um, the product, the the, the consumer facing product. Uh, is really we're on kind of you know version 3.5 if you will and we're about ready to go to 4.0 and that's 3.5 has only been in the market for 10 or so months and so we're, we're we expect over the next you know 6 to 12 months to start seeing more of that kind of conversion activity we do we do track and see um, the the consumers credit scores when they started and and you can see uh, bucketed improvement over time our clients can also see that across their lockers we see one of the things that we that we really measure, and, and this kind of goes to engagement, is what we call monthly active monthly active users. So this is a measure of how often consumers are coming back to the, the version of the locker for our client. So this is engagement, by the way. And we see that uh, pushing 20%. So 20% of uh of, of the lockers that are out for a particular lender. There, twenty percent of those are coming in and logging back in on a monthly basis. That's that's a meaningful engagement stat, especially in this digital app space. Um, you know, there's some of the biggest apps that are out there that are in the kind of the low teens, um, and so we. Th this is where we believe that the combination of the technology and that local relationship with a loan officer improves the engagement, so that we can see that higher uh, activity uh, in in the the monthly activity that we see. That's a significant number, by the way. And, and when you talk about that, that is that's something that if I were a lender using a tool like Finlocker or like you mentioned, another one that may be out there to me, how engaged is the contact? How engaged is the borrower yeah. with inside that system? Because every time they're in it, it gives me another point of contact. Right. It gives right. me another reason to reach out to them. And that's a high percentage. Yeah, we're pretty. Pretty, that, that's the one we're most focused on because we think that ultimately leads to conversion. So Right. I mean, because to your point, right, it's a journey, right? It's it's not like somebody's going to go in if they're, if I'm John Gibson, I set up with FinLocker and I give one of you know my borrower a, a locker, right? It's not like they're going to go in one month from here was my issue to I'm fixed, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's a journey, whether they're ready or not, whether it's a credit issue, whether it 
the scenario is they need a larger down payment and they need to save. How do I do that? Right. They want to wait till the rates go from six to something a little bit lower. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I want to be in at five, not six. What's that look like for my payment? Right. So to your point, it's a journey. But the more engaged they are with inside the application shows that their interest level is still high. And that's a point of contact every single time. Absolutely. That's a great statistic. Absolutely. So, hey, I got a couple of questions that came through. Um, so I want to make sure, be mindful of the time and try to hit a couple of them. Um, so let's see. One of them was, uh, I guess you would know this better. How do lenders think about integrations with FinLocker? So if I'm a lender and I'm looking to do this, how should I be thinking about it? Yeah, so the, the way the product was engineered, it, it doesn't require integrations. It could be a total standalone solution. And in a lot of cases, it is. In fact, most of our clients start that way. And then we kind of work together on where the logical points are to integrate. But once we start to get to dis, you know, discovering where to integrate, the, the first and probably most important is with the CRM. And so um, when we talk about uh, the MAU statistic and the engagement, we, we make available to our client, the lender, um, access to certain data points in our admin portal. And so you're gonna, you can see, as an example, when the locker was created, when's the last time they logged in, by credit score tranche. We don't give you the number of their score, but we can tranche and show you where they're going up or down. Uh, did they set up any budgets and goals, et cetera? Those are all data points that can be ingested in the CRM to help drive uh, further engagement outside of the locker. So CRM is the primary um, connection point. And on the back end, when, when someone's actually ready to share the data, um, we'll, we, we talk about integration at that point to push the data directly to point of sale or, or LOS. That was going to be the next question that somebody put up is, okay, so now I've got somebody, I've signed them up, they've gone through, the, they're ready now. You mentioned kind of that 3.4 MISMO and getting yeah. them all the data. Is that what it is as far as like, how does that push to the me, the originator? Yeah. So day one, again, without any integration, we would, we would uh, send the loan officer an alert. They'd get an alert from FinLocker that uh, one of their customers has initiated a data share. And then that email would have a link to our admin portal where the loan officer would log in with their, their pass, their secure, you know, their uh, credentials. And then from there, they can download that 3.4 or MISMO compliant and call, you know, I'll call it drag and drop into POS or LOS. Yep. Some of our enterprise lender clients, we have, you know, that integration that happens seamlessly in the back end. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. Um, one of the other questions that came up, you kind of talked about this, but maybe expand on it with um, maybe a real life situation, so to speak. But you mentioned kind of like marketing and a different philosophy or a different angle towards marketing or like call to action type of stuff. What have you seen there? in regards to so far with some of the lenders you've been doing business with and maybe how they've kind of been able to do something different. Yeah, it's it's evolved. It started kind of with the basics, like an email journey with a with a call to action, download my, you know, whatever they call the product. Uh, and then what's been super fun of late is we have clients that are active on social media. So I talk about the TikToks and the Instagrams and some of these Finfluencers, a new term, Finfluencer, um, are doing kind of financial fitness, financial literacy as a as a strategy on social media, and then the call to action in their posts is click here for your for to download your free ABC Mortgage app or whatever they're gonna whatever they call our version of it. So that's yeah, kind of the you know the the email journeys all the way to social media to we have clients that have built landing pages specific to the product. Um, so it's kind of spanning all kind of all the digital uh, marketing strategies. Well, I love the the we talk about it all the time, right? You got to be where your clients where your clients are. Yep. And, and and so much is being done on this thing like you've talked about and then your hands and social and TikTok and Instagram. What a great concept, right? Of using the educational tool readiness and and using that platform and then having some type of call to action, they can click on something landing page and you're off and running. Yeah. Um, here's one that came up from somebody and you mentioned it in the one slide about how I think it was true bill that would have been at the top of the screen on yeah. that one slide. And now it was like rocket something. I forget what was underneath there. 
Um, what do you see the impact there uh, from a standpoint of that acquisition? Yeah. So uh, in December of 2021, I think it was Rocket purchased Truebill. Truebill is a is a you know personal financial management app. Their their focus, in, and I'm a Truebill. I was a Truebill user. Um, their focus is on helping consumers identify recurring payments from their checking accounts or credit cards, and either identify you know how many people have multiple Netflix accounts and they don't even realize it. So pretty cool use case that they kind of built their uh, product around. Um, Quicken Rocket acquired the company, acquired the product, and they just rebranded it Rocket Money. That's with Summer. Yep. And a uh, couple things. So, kind of an aha moment for me as you know, being at a at a startup fintech. It was like my first immediate reaction was, "Oh man, why couldn't we have sold to those guys?" <laughs> and then, uh, and then you know, it quickly turned into this validated this acquisition validated our our business thesis what we believe uh, lenders of all sizes, not just the biggest of the big should be focused on. And so the immediate reaction was it helped validate what we were, what we set out to do. And then the rebranding from Truebill to Rocket Money this summer has actually really opened up the eyes of, of the industry, I would say. Um, we've had more inbound kind of interest. Uh, you know, how do we get some, how do we have our own version of Finlocker so that we can go compete with the, the rocket monies of the world. And so I think it's what, what's clear to me is that as a independent mortgage banker, right? At, if, I, if I'm John Gibson mortgage, if I don't have a strategy to, to engage my prospects and customers beyond kind of the transaction, which we've been talking about, it's going to be harder and harder for me to earn the business from that segment of customers. And so um, it's for us, it's it's been validation and now it's starting to turn into the market realizing they need their own version. And luckily for us, most lenders don't have, you know, the the resources to go build their own version of this. And we've happened to engineer the product in a way that makes it pretty simple to, to deploy. Yeah, it was interesting because um, you had mentioned that in that slide. And I do think, I mean, you've heard Brian say, and I've said it a couple of times that I, I think being in control of your own destiny, right? And not creating any potential wedges between you and your contact slash customer as they go through that journey is vital going yeah. forward right and and to your point it certainly validates the the acquisition certainly validates the <laughs> space right that there is some that this is significantly important and there's a way with with somebody like a finlocker right who's a b to b to c you're controlling the relationship. It's your company. At the end of the day, they're the engine behind it. But yeah. think about everything we talked about today and what they're going through. Um, okay, a couple of the other ones I think were similar to what we've already talked about. So I guess, Brian, kind of in closing, from your perspective, anything else to talk about or any thoughts? Um, I'll set go off the, uh, the technology for a moment and just you know recognize we are in a market that's tough. It, it is no question about it. It's one of the one of the few times I'm, I'm kind of miss not missing being on your in your seat, John. Um, I, I did miss it there a few years back, but um, it's tough. Um, and the it's going to take a special company and special people to, to be successful on the other side of this. And I think our, our industry was ripe for kind of you know, some shrinking and then the pandemic kind of came in and saved the day again. Um, I, I think by and large, and just, just knowing the, the, you know, the Flagstar customer base as well as I, I knew it. And I, I think it's still pretty strong. It, you have the right customers and the, and the customers have the right partnership with Flagstar to, to really fight through and be successful on the other end of this. And we've all, you know, most of us have been through this cycle, you know, before and, Surviving it is one thing, but there is there is an opportunity to thrive on the other side of this. I you know just don't want people to lose sight of that. Yeah, and I think that's the beginning, right? There, in markets like this, there's tremendous opportunity. You got it takes a lot of hard work. You got to go after it, but it isn't always doom and gloom. It's just right. really it, it, no matter what the media would want to portray and make you think. 
it's real. There's always opportunities, right? And, and look, I, I was appreciative of you coming on and doing this because I think with what we're trying to do with these series, right? This is the value add, right? We could sit here and talk about the interest rates and the housing market and all that, so we're blowing the face. But how can our partners set themselves up to succeed moving forward? And that's why I reached out to Brian, knowing him like I did and knowing what he's doing at Finlocker. This is something that literally separates you from your competition. You're investing in your future. You're investing in your personal growth. And at the end of the day, you're putting yourself in control. And to me, that's where it should start and that's where it should go. So, um, I know we had Brian's information up there, uh, obviously rolling around there. Anybody needs any of that, if you didn't see it, certainly, uh, and it's coming back up right now, certainly you can reach out to our account executives. We all have Brian's info. We're, we're you know, obviously we've known Brian for a very long time now. Um, so we can get you in contact with Brian. Uh, obviously you can, you know, look it up, Finlocker and Brian, uh, and obviously at finlocker.com. So Brian, hey. Appreciate it, man. Can't, can't yeah. say thank you enough for coming on board. I, I don't know how I didn't catch this, but I love the old school Pittsburgh Pirates hat in the background. That's like from that movie Airplane back in the day. <laughs> That's as old school as it gets. That's um, right. But hey, man, seriously, Brian, thanks. Appreciate you doing this. Um, a lot of good knowledge, and I'm, uh, and I'm sure you know the, the viewership will, will certainly be uh, interested and have more questions and reaching out. So appreciate yeah. it, Brian. Thanks. Thanks for having me on, John. Yep, absolutely. All right, gang. Hey, um, Brian View, Finlocker, a lot of ton of information there. Uh, I highly suggest you reach out to them and him. Um, again, this is about creating opportunity for yourself. Take advantage of this marketplace and the opportunity you have. It's going to take a lot of hard work. We will get through to the other side. Um, but something like that where you can engage with more clients earlier, stay in touch with them constantly throughout the process. And don't lose them to somebody else, I think is tremendously important as we move forward. So uh, with that being said, I do think we have um, a little promo for our next uh, series in October. So on October 13th at 2 p.m., Sean Stevens is going to come on and he's going to talk about uh, kind of that broker to banking. And is it right for some? Is it not right for others? When should you consider it? What makes sense from going from in essence, being a broker to like a non-delegated correspondent lender, what, what are the questions you should be asking yourself to make sure it's the right time for you to consider that and or do that? Really excited about that session. Uh, we've been helping clients do that for God over 35 years. And, and uh, I wanted to get somebody outside of Flagstar to come on and give their viewpoint and their opinion on how they look at it. So really excited to have Sean in October. As always, I uh, can't say thank you enough for the partnership. We appreciate uh, the business that we get. Uh, we know we have to earn it, and hopefully things like this continue uh, to make us one of your value partners. So, again, thanks for your time, and we will see you on October 13th.